Hey, my name is Kenneth Purdom, and I'm a real estate photographer and just wanted to go over with you some tips on how to prepare your home for a real estate photo shoot. So this will be just talking about things you can do to get ready for a photo shoot. And these are things you want to do before the photo shoot, not uh, not during the photo shoot, not right before, but maybe even a day or two before the photo shoot so that you're ready, uh, depending on where you are in the process. But you definitely want to have these things done before the photo shoot uh, because there's not time to do them in the photo shoot and then trying to edit some of these things out after the photo shoot can be very expensive. So usually in the average photo shoot situation, um, you're not paying for that type of edits. You've just paid for a good basic clean photo, a professional photo that's level, it's been white balanced and it's accurately displaying the room. So there, there are some actual guidelines on what we can edit and cannot edit um, you know in the real estate industry so if you're if you're thinking we're going to edit everything and make it perfect that's probably not the situation and probably not what has been ordered so we will want to share some tips with you on on how to get ready for a photo shoot if you're looking for a list on how to do this you just want to go to real estate photographer pro go to the very bottom of the website i'll go there with you now we'll just go to Real Estate Photographer Pro. Click on the website and then go to the very bottom of the website. I'm just going to slide down and right there, Real Estate Photographer Pro.com, how to prepare a home for a real estate photo shoot. And that will open up on a detailed checklist on how to get ready for this. And this is why you want to look at this you know, before the photo shoot. So some of these things may take uh, more time than than you have the day of the photo shoot. And I want to just show you a home. I don't know who shot this home. I don't know who has this home, but this is a home I'm about to show you that was not ready. It's a nice home. It's a clean home, but it's it's how we all live. So this is what a home looks like when it's not ready for a photo shoot. And the other thing, this, this home did not have professional photos. So I'm not picking on this situation or picking on the person that did I'm just trying to show you the difference. So here's a home I just ran across. So uh, that photo right there still got boxes in the hallway. I don't even know if that's a shot I would have taken, but it is showing that stairway. So it has some, some value at the top of the staircase there. Uh, that's just a bad photo. That room's probably ready. Uh, nothing wrong with that. It's just a bad photo. Uh, that room is ready. It's got some some things over here. And so, see, see, even with this is probably cell phone shots. Even with cell phones, you know, we're picking up a lot of angles. And again, I didn't do these photos. I'm just trying to show you how this home was not prepared. See, there's a lot of items left in this this situation here. Blankets that you know are clashing with the room. Um, I guess a gym bag, school bag, cables, things that just are distracting. So you want to eliminate distractions. You want the viewer to see themselves living in the room. I think that last photo even had somebody, you know, items in the, uh, you know, that again, I, would, I wouldn't have taken that photo. There's, it's just really showing the clutter. But you can see if you're not prepared, it's, it's going to show up. So let's see what the kitchen look like here. Here's the living room. You always want to be sure to turn the TVs off. You want to try to get rid of all these family photos because, again, I didn't do these. These are dark cell phone pictures that somebody did, but even a cell phone is picking up all these family photos and blankets, and those are distracting. Let's go over to a home that was, was prepared, was ready. This is a little home in Nashville. We did the photos. See how the tables are empty, pillows stacked straight and this was done before we got there we walked in and it's ready uh, the photographers are not stagers they're um, they're that's not their their gift not their skill set not what they're even being paid for uh, so we can move some things but you, you don't want us in a situation where you're relying on the photographer to try to move things around um, you, you want those things to be be done before you get there. If you do have a lot of things that you can't 
get out of the shot. There was a school bag that was left in the shot, but the main part of the room is, you know, there's no distractions. I can see that room and I can see myself living there. I can see my furniture there. Um, no distractions on the walls or the tables. Uh, but if you do have a situation where you have a lot of moving boxes, one trick is, is to take an empty room and take all of those moving boxes and just put them in that, that bedroom, that closet, just fill it up. We're not going to shoot any closets. We're not going to do any photos of any garages. Uh, and, and if you have to fill up one room and make it your storage area, if you still need that extra space, uh, and we just won't take pictures of that room. But you want the main part of the house, the kitchen, the living room, the master bedroom, and the and the guest rooms to be empty. If you have to, fill up a guest bedroom with boxes if you don't have a garage or anything to put them in. But you can kind of see how this home was ready. Also, notice how the lights are off. We like to shoot with the lights off because it makes the colors accurate. And it, you know, if you get in a situation where the light bulbs are not working... If you turn the lights off, no one will ever know. The camera does not need the lights. So we love to turn the lights off and shoot without the lights. So there's no lights here. They're all off. I'll show you another house. It was totally ready, but it was really dark. It was actually raining the day we shot this house. Uh, and it was a dark house because it's a big house, so we shot it with the lights on. But you can see how the walls are empty. It's got a few art pieces on the wall, but there's not any personal items that are distracting. There's no, there's not a lot of rugs or floor covering that's distracting. Let's go into the kitchen, the office, you know, you know, you could say maybe these skull pillows are distracting, but as a percentage of the photos, that is very small. You know, it's a decorative piece. Obviously this is extremely large. I think it was over 5,000 square feet. And that was, it was a rainy day. So uh, we did sky replacement. We also cleaned up the yard because there was so much uh, rain that day. Uh, so you can see how there's just really not anything distracting. You can see the room as it is. We sh probably should have turned that TV off, but uh, I didn't catch that. Uh, I to get you into the kitchen to show you how. See the kitchen area? No distractions. There's not too many photos on the wall. There are some photos, not a lot of appliances on the countertops. Everything, the stove is empty. The countertops are empty. I can see across there. A lot of times people will put something in the middle of this table and they're blocking the view and we just need to move that. because so The camera is going to go all the way around the kitchen in the living room, the kitchen, and the master bedroom. We're gonna go all the way around that room and take several photos. So that's the reason you don't want anything blocking that. And in the guest bedrooms, we're gonna mainly shoot from the doorways. So you get the idea there's no distractions. Bathrooms, you want the countertops empty. You don't want any personal items there. That's a bathroom under the staircase. This is a mud room. Pantry. That was an extra large pantry. That would be the only reason we'd shoot a pantry because it's extremely large. Had a walk-in closet to a pantry. They had a large laundry room. Guest bedrooms. We're mainly going to be shooting from the doorway. So if there's something in there you, you're trying to hide, like a treadmill, an exercise bike, you want to put that to the right or left of the door that's entering the room. You do not want the treadmill over on, on in this example. You wouldn't want it on the in front of this window because then the camera is going to shoot from the doorway and it's going to see a you know big treadmill over here so boxes exercise equipment put it to just to the left of the door or just to the right of the door where you've got that extra space and it will make that view look accurate and the per viewer will see that room is the way they want to see it as opposed to being full of exercise equipment or if you had boxes stacked over here in this right hand corner I'm going to move them to the left of this door so they're out of the shot. So just remember, on guest bedrooms, we're going to be shooting from the entrance door. And then if your view is clear from that doorway, it should be clear for the camera. And put your items on the right or the left. If you've got items there, you're, you're still needing to, you, know, you don't want them in the shot.
Okay, this one that one had was actually like a guest master bedroom, I guess. We would, so we needed to shoot this shot because it had a bedroom with a bathroom connected. That's the logic behind that. But see how the countertop is empty? Okay, here we are going in the master. Could have moved the fan, but it's not blocking the view, and the room is extra large, so we left it there. There's, you know, the bedspread straight, level, personal items off the table, personal pictures off the walls. There's not anything distracting. There's no, like, uh, UT blanket or Alabama blanket or uh, something like that. No college blankets or colors that might distract the viewer. So you get a good, accurate view. Watch the bathrooms. Counters are completely empty. Pictures are gone. Again, we left the lights on this one because the house was dark. It's a rainy day. We did sky replacement and cleaned up the outside photos and cleaned up the yard. But uh, that's, usually we will turn these lights off. Uh, that way you get a good edit. And, and if there is a light bulb out, you would never know. This house had no, no light bulb issues. They were, they were ready. They had, they may have even had a team getting this house ready. And the showers, you want this, these empty. All the personal items are gone, you know, because those are going to show in a nice custom shower. We're going to take a picture of that. Just your average, you know, shower. We're not going to take a picture of that. But if it's a custom shower, we're taking a photo of that. So you want all the personal items out of the way. Closets, I would prefer not to shoot closets, especially when they have clothes in them. But this one was a custom closet, a large closet, so we needed a photo of it. It's very neat, but uh, just my personal opinion, I'd rather not shoot a closet if it has items in it. But that was a huge closet, custom closet, so it needed a photo. And just going up to the bedroom, see how they're just, just sparingly empty. The walls are empty. It just looks like, you know, there's a few items in there that are just staged. And... Uh, this was a home that was lived in, but it was two adults. Obviously, it's probably easy to get ready. I think maybe they just had visiting grandkids from time to time. But countertops, you want those things empty. So you want to take all that, throw it in a basket, and put it on the counter the day before the photo shoot. And you get the idea. But again, if you go to realestatephotographerpro.com, go to the very bottom of the website, you want to see the uh, how to get a home ready. Uh, actually, the title is How to Prepare Your Home for a Real Estate Photo Shoot. And one of the things I wanted to point out, move your cars away from the front of the homes. If you have your cars in the front of the homes, it's going to block the view when the photographer pulls up and we can't get the front pictures. If, if you move the cars and park them in front of the house, then the cars show from the inside photos you want the cars to be to the far right or left of the house parked in the front but in the move to in front of the neighbor's house you want them away from the front of the house uh, mini blinds you want those um, open but cracked and tilted down here in the checklist there's there's a and some information on that uh, lights off we prefer to have lights off countertops empty walls we would suggest and your realtor will probably suggest to empty those animals they need to go somewhere else <laughs> they need to be out of the way because what will happen the photographer is shooting on a tripod every photo is actually a series of photos so for one photo we may be taking six photos and then stacking those together and if someone walks across or if an animal walks across there uh, and you've damaged a photo. you got an unusable photo because you're just going to have a ghostly blur. So uh, cats, dogs, uh, they need to go somewhere else. Let's see. Blankets, college blankets. Take those completely off. The colors are distracting. Um, you do not want that. Uh, on a windy day, flags on the front porch can be a problem because it can be so so much wind blowing those they can be blurry in the photos you want to be careful about those there's really no reason for flags on the front porch uh, because they can be the wrong flag uh, they can be clashing colors and they can be blurry so the, the flags around the front porch really do not help for the uh, photos 
and this checklist has all of that. It has items for the kitchen, items for the living room, items for the bedroom, guest bedrooms, swimming pools and patios areas. And it even has our order of shoots. So we're going to start in the front, go three to six photos in the front of the house. We're going to go right in the front door, follow the traffic patterns, then right out the back door and shoot the backyard. And we'll be done in 45 minutes at the most an hour and a half. Now, if we're doing video and walkthrough video and drones, that's that would be an almost we would start over and start shooting that again. But for an average shoot, we should be able to pull up, shoot the front yard, come in the front door. All the lights are off. Go right through the home. We should be done. 45 minutes on an average house, on a large house, an hour and a half. And this checklist is very helpful. Hopefully this video is very helpful. We look forward to working with you. And everything's at realestatephotographerpro.com. And then go bottom of the website and click how to prepare your home for a real estate photo shoot. Thank you.